Hello! In this video for Anatomy and Physiology, we're going to be discussing the first six cranial nerves um, of the body or of the brain. Okay? So your body communicates with the brain uh, via a very complicated nervous system. Okay? For most of the body, it communicates with the brain via the spinal cord. Okay? And there's also 12 cranial nerves that mainly serve the head and the neck. And those are the ones that we're going to be highlighting in this video. So to start off, I want to give you a mnemonic that will hopefully help you in memorizing these cranial nerves. Okay, so just keep in mind that the first letter of each of the words that I'm going to say uh, signifies the first letter of the cranial nerves. Okay, so here goes. On old Olympus, towering tops, a fine Victorian gentleman viewed a hawk. So the cranial nerves that uh, coincide with these are Old factory, optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens. And these are the where we're going to stop in this video. Okay. And then the next six is facial, vestibular cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. And then those are the six that will be on part two of this topic. So keep in mind also that as we go along, when we label these uh, cranial nerves, we're going to be giving them first uh, the common name, okay, which gives a very, it tips you off uh, to its function, and then also giving it a CN, capital C and N, for uh, cranial nerve, and then a Roman numeral that goes with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, these cranial nerves. So I'm going to split these first six up into uh, two sections of three. The first section of three, these cranial nerves uh, all begin with uh, the letter O. Okay. So we're going to take a look at the cranial nerves and at the base. We're getting a base view of the uh, of the uh, cranium. But actually, let me back up a little bit. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, these cranial nerves are located on the midbrain and the pons of the brainstem. Okay, so that's the, uh, the midbrain and the pons. So now going uh, from a base view, zooming in, we have our first cranial nerve, the olfactory, O. And as you know, the second one also begins with the O, and this is the optic chiasm. Okay, this actually goes out a little bit further, but we'll go into greater detail in uh, that part of the video. So you have the optic, and then the second, the third also begins with the O, and that's more inferior medial on the uh, ridge line here of the midbrain and the pons, and that is your that is your ocular motor. Okay, so those are the first three: olfactory, optic, and ocular motor. All right. So let's take away the highlight, and now let's deal with the next three which the first two begin with the T, okay, here it is, this is your trochlear, okay, your trochlear nerve, and we'll get into more detail as to their function and location as we go on in this video, okay, and then the largest of all these is the trigeminal, okay, so that's trochlear, trigeminal, and then the sixth one, which is more inferior, medial, it is your abducens, right here. Okay, it's on the pretty close to the midline of the of the pons. Okay, so that's your abducens. All right, so just again, that is your olfactory, your optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, and your abducens. Okay, so now let's spend the rest of the time in this video highlighting each of these specific cranial nerves, their locations, and their functions. So kicking it off, cranial nerve number one, the olfactory nerve, we're going to take a look at a side view of the uh, of the head here. Now you really can't see much here. Um, now you can make out the brain, I'm sorry, the brain, uh, your parietal bone, your occipital bone. But we're going to take a deeper look in here. Hopefully you can make out that the nose would go right here. And we're going to zoom in here. Now you can see the olfactory uh, bulb here. In fact, I can maybe even remove part of the, the frontal lobe. Okay, so I've removed this half of the frontal lobe. 
and now we have an interior view and now a superior is zooming down you can make out the olfactory bulb and the olfactory track okay now one thing that I want you to take a look at that you can't really see here the actual beginnings of the olfactory nerve actually begin with the olfactory cells that are going through this ethmoid bone okay and if you see inside of there you see these tiny little yellow hairs and those are actually your olfactory cells okay we're going to take a closer look into those uh, so we can see the actual function of uh, this cranial nerve number one olfactory nerve so I removed the ethmoid bone so we can have a closer look at the at the olfactory cells okay so here we have the olfactory fibers Okay, we have about 20 million of these fibers that go through the ethmoid bone and at the end of each of these fibers each of these fibers has about 10 to 20 million cilia or tiny little hairs receptor binding sites for odor molecules that go um, through the air now this is pretty incredible um, especially when you compare it to let's say the bear's olfactory uh, bulb or sense of smell uh, a bear has about 2,100 times the capacity of, of smell than a human does. Uh, their olfactory bulb is about five times larger than that of a human's. They can smell carcasses up to 20 miles away down, uh, downwind. Now, we don't come anywhere near that. Uh, in fact, uh, very often you'll find in your own experience that you have to kind of... Uh, take a good whiff of things to get a really good smell just so you can get enough molecules uh, to get picked up by these binding sites. Now another interesting fact about your olfactory cells is that these are the only parts of the neuron that are exposed to the uh, to the external environment, the only part of the brain that's exposed to the external environment and as you might imagine they can uh, experience some very harsh conditions in the environment so these nerve cells do, uh, they do come off and they do regener regenerate every uh, 60 days or so. Continuing on with cranial nerve number two, the optic nerve, here we have the eyeball. Uh, the eyeball has two main components to it. You have the more mechanical optic component of the eye, uh, just so you can have an idea of what that is. You have the cornea, which is a transparent layer that helps focus light into the eye. And then you have the iris, which uh, controls the amount of light that, go, light that goes into the eye. The more melanin you have, the more brown that uh, iris looks, and the less, the more bluish. Okay, and then you also have uh, the lens, which helps focus light. Uh, and then lastly, the neural part, which is the aspect of the eye that we will be focusing more on in this video. Uh, this is called the retina. This is the only part of the brain that is actually visible without any dissection. When you go to an optometrist, when you get your eye exams, uh, they'll dilate your iris, they'll dilate your pupils, and they will use an ophthalmoscope to look behind the eye for any kind of uh, conditions. There are, there are various diseases that can be, um, can be diagnosed by looking at the back of the eye, and uh, I'll make another video of an example of one of those diseases. It's quite fascinating of what uh, you can find out just by looking at the back of the eye. So the retina's shape, which is this uh, circular shape, is, is uh, made by the vitreous body, which is a gelatinous liquid fluid that fills the eyeball and gently presses the retina um, and gives it, gives it its, uh, its uh, shape. So just back here behind the, uh, the retina, we have what's called the optic uh, disc. Okay, this optic disc actually is the beginnings of the optic nerve okay which will lead back into the brain okay and this optic disc creates what's called a blind spot in the uh, in your visual field uh, but some a really interesting phenomenon that occurs where your brain actually fills in uh, that that empty spot so we'll take a deeper look into the brain uh, we'll follow this optic nerve this optic track uh, into uh, the posterior so here we have a side view of the uh, of the head and you have the eyeballs and you can kind of see if we get a superior view you can see the optic nerve uh, just come through on a posterior part of the eye so what we're going to do is we're going to remove our um, we're going to move our remove our zygomatic bone 
our sphenoid bone and our temporal bone so we can get a better view of the uh, optic nerve here okay so here we go here's your optic nerve that we were speaking of just a minute ago and then here we have both optic nerves come together at the, at the optic chiasm okay here at the optic chiasm a very interesting uh, thing occurs so for each eye, all the visual stimuli that is um, that is coming in at the at the medial aspect of each eye, the nerve fibers that take in that information that run down the optic track, they actually cross over here at the optic chiasm. They cross over and they're processed on opposite hemispheres of the brain. So this visual stimuli continues in these optic tracks and they travel to the primary visual cortex uh, that's located at the, uh, at, the, at the posterior aspect of the occipital lobe. Okay, so again, this is optic nerve, cranial nerve number two. Okay, so we have here our ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve number three. You can see its origin point here is on the ridge line of the midbrain and the uh, pons. And then it's making its way through uh, your supral, superior orbital fissure. Uh, and just medial to that fissure, actually, you can also see the optic foramen, which is where your optic nerve uh, enters your skull and then connects to the optic chiasm. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this uh, ocular motor nerve and what it controls. Uh, this ocular motor nerve innervates five extrinsic muscles that are involved with eye movement. Okay, first of all, you have your superior rectus, which allows you to move your eye up. Okay, and then when you want to cross your eyes, make a kid laugh, you have your medial rectus, then the inferior rectus to look down. And then to control your eyelids, you have your levator palpebri superior oris. Okay, and then the last extrinsic muscle is your inferior oblique. Okay, and this, this muscle controls eye movement for supralateral movement, so up and then out. Okay, and then lastly, uh, your ocular motor nerve also has uh, autonomic nerve fibers that run through it and control um, or constrict your iris via ciliary muscles. Okay, and again, this is an autonomic nerve function, which means you have no control over, uh, over that function. So this is your ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve number three. Okay, so we're here at the uh, trochlear nerve. This is cranial nerve number four. Uh, this is the smallest of the cranial nerves, and it has a sort of an, an, an odd uh, origin point where it uh, originates on the posterior side of the brainstem, as you can see, and then it wraps around the pons, and then it innervates uh, posteriorly your superior oblique muscle. Okay, So what I've done here on the left eye is I've shaded um, your levator palpebrae superioris and your superior rectus muscle and just below just inferior to those muscles you can see uh, where your uh, superior oblique muscle uh, attaches to the eyeball so this muscle is responsible for the infralateral movement of the eye so just kind of keep your face straight and then look down at your shoulder without moving your face and you'll see what particular movement this muscle is uh, responsible for and this is your uh, trochlear cranial nerve number four so here we are at the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve number five. Uh, this nerve has its origins in the lateral aspect of the pons. Okay, these nerve fibers protrude out and they come into what's called the trigeminal ganglion. Okay, this is pretty much the processing center of these three branches uh, of the trigeminal nerve. It's also the site, or it can be the site of some dormant viruses, and I can address that in another video. Let's take a closer look here at how this uh, nerve branches out into three different nerves. Um, keep in mind also that the tri prefix in this word is referring to the fact that it branches out into three nerves. Uh, some mistake that tri prefix as meaning, okay, this is a third cranial nerve. So just try to keep that in mind as you're studying this. So let's take a look at these three branches, starting with our most superior branch, the ophthalmic branch. Okay, now we're going to take a look at these three branches and we're going to look at where they come out of the skull. Okay, so let's look at this feature here called the superior orbital fissure. Uh, and this is again where the ophthalmic branch uh, comes out. This ophthalmic branch 
innervates the top portion of the face. Okay, as you can see, it kind of comes out where the eyeball does. And if you look a little closer, you'll also see the optic foramen, and this is where the optic nerve uh, will go through. Okay, so ophthalmic branch innervates the forehead and the, the top portion of the head. Okay, it gives you sensation uh, in that portion of the body. And now let's take a look at our, our middle branch, our, v, uh, our V2 branch. This comes out of, uh, of this foramen called the foramen rotundum. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this nerve. You'll notice, I have it highlighted here in blue, it'll come out of the foramen rotundum, but then it also goes through another canal here called the infraorbital canal. Okay, now this nerve innervates the middle part and the upper jaw, the middle part of the face and upper jaw. Okay. All right, so let's de-highlight this now. Alrighty. So finally, we're going to take a look now at our third, our most inferior branch of the trigeminal nerve. Okay, this branch is the mandibular branch, and this comes out of the foramen ovale. Okay, so this branch will come out. Here, let me zoom out a little bit here. Maybe get a little bit more perspective. Okay, this branch will come out and it'll innervate the lower part of the jaw. Okay, the mandible. And it gives you sensation uh, on your lower jaw, your lower teeth. Okay? Now, the other branch that you'll see here. Okay, now again, this is all a part of the same branch, the mandibular branch. But this particular, uh, this particular nerve gives us uh, more of a more, uh, motor function. Okay, and it innervates the muscles that are... Uh, control the uh, the muscles of mastication. Okay, so we're going to highlight a couple of these muscles here. It's going to zoom out a little bit. Now, uh, I'm actually very familiar with these muscles of mastication because when I was in college, uh, I was going out for a pot fly and our outfielder was coming in also. We were both looking up. Uh, we collided and his elbow clocked me on the side of the head on my temporalis and he knocked me unconscious for a couple of seconds. And for about a week, I had about a, I had a uh, ping pong size welt on the side of my head that every time I went into the calf, I had to massage the, my temporalis so that I would be able to chew properly because uh, I could barely open up my mouth. And there were times when I, would eat or when I was eating and my food would actually slip out of my mouth without me really being aware of it and my saliva. So, so again, this is a very large muscle for... Uh, for masticating, I actually have a video dedicated to these muscles, so I'll put a link up on this um, right here so you can uh, have access to it. So along with the temporalis, you also have the um, the masseter, okay, superficial masseter, okay, and then we also have more uh, our more internal muscles for mastication, your medial pterygoid, okay, and then your lateral pterygoid. Okay, so again, these are muscles of mastication. These are the muscles that are innervated by the, the uh, inferior portion of the trigeminal nerve. And we've come to the final cranial nerve number six for this video. As you can see here, it, it, uh, its point of origin is at the uh, medial aspect of the pons. This is the, the A in our mnemonic from the beginning of the video. And it comes in posteriorly to innervate the, uh, the mus uh, one particular muscle of the eye. Okay, and just like previous nerves that we've discussed, uh, it comes out of the skull through the superior orbital fissure. Okay, now this muscle, I'm sorry, this nerve innervates uh, one muscle, so it doesn't have as much responsibility as the other cranial nerves that we've discussed. And this muscle is a lateral rectus, and it is responsible for uh, lateral movement of the eyeball. Okay, so that's your six cranial nerves, and then the next video, part two of cranial nerves, we'll discuss cranial nerves seven through twelve. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.